In this video we will show you 10 interesting places that we recommend to visit in Paphos. The numbering of attractions is given in random order. Number 1. Paphos Embankment Walking To be fair, the embankment is not as green and beautiful as the one in Limassol, but it also has its own flavor. Here it is more miniature. Everywhere you will find a stall with local goods, whether it offers sweets or souvenirs. Markets alternate with restaurants, where you can choose dishes for every taste, from steak to fresh seafood. The city embankment is not big, but the walking path continues further for 12 kilometers along the sea and all the hotels. You can watch the entire trail in a separate video. Number 2. Paphos Archaeological Park The park represents remains of an ancient city of Paphos, founded by the Greeks shortly after the Trojan War in the 12th century BC. Historians call it Neopaphos. The city was entirely destroyed by earthquakes in the 4th century AD. Here you can see the ruins of an amphitheater, a town square and entire streets with colonnades. Particularly valuable are the well-preserved mosaics of the 2nd and the 3rd centuries AD. They are in the house of Dionysius, which belonged to a wealthy Roman citizen. His estate was 2,000 square meters and occupied an entire block. The house had 40 rooms, 15 of which with mosaics based on ancient Greek and Roman mythology. Other mosaics are in the house of a Roman proconsul. Perhaps they even belonged to Cicero, who was proconsul in Cyprus for some time. Be sure to read about the mosaics on Wikipedia before visiting. It will be much more interesting if you understand their plot. Also, in the park is a fortress of the Crusaders, Saranta Colonus, which translates as 40 columns. The Crusaders conquered the island in the Middle Ages. The fortress was built from ruins of an ancient city and stood until an earthquake in 1222. Number 3. Blue Lagoon in Lachi. A 50-minute drive north of Paphos brings us to the resort village of Lachi, from which sea cruises depart to the Blue Lagoon of the Akamas Nature Reserve Park. This journey will give you a lot of pleasure and vivid impressions. Number 4. St. Paul's Pillar Not far from the harbour of Paphos and the archaeological park is the church of Vaya Kyriaki Chrysopolitisa. This church was built around 1540 AD as a Catholic church on the site of a small Roman Orthodox church which was destroyed in 365 AD by an earthquake. Before that, an ancient Roman forum was situated there, the ruins of which can be seen around the church. 
in 45 AD, Apostle Paul visited Paphos and read his sermons here in this forum, for which he was seized by the Roman authorities and scourged at one of the marble columns. This column is now a landmark of Paphos. In 2010, the Pope visited Cyprus, and this place was the first in his list of visits. The Church has an interesting history of creation and reconstruction. Be sure to read before visiting. Number 5. Avakas Gorge Nature Trail it is located 20 kilometers away from Paphos. Here passes, perhaps, one of the most amazing hiking trails in Cyprus. First, you walk along an open picturesque path, and then you enter a narrow rocky canyon, which was formed by a mountain river over millions of years. In some places, you will have to walk directly on the water and sometimes under the streams of water flowing from the rocks. In the middle of the gorge, you will notice a giant stone that is stuck between two rocks at a height of 20 meters. This place has its secret. In one of the walls, an entrance into a cave was recently discovered, which leads to a gallery of underground holes at a depth of 70 meters. Scientists have not fully explored this place, but arrowheads and pottery have already been found here. Possibly they are from the Copper Age. Number 6. Tombs of the King. This is a large necropolis, two kilometers away from Paphos. The name derives from the splendor and decoration of the tombs, as there are in fact no kings buried in them. From the 4th century BC to the 3rd century AD, the crypts of the local aristocracy and high officials of ancient Paphos were located here. Underground tombs were carved directly into the rock. Some of them imitate an ordinary house while others are more like small palaces with their columned halls, frescoes and courtyards. On a wall of one of the tombs, you can find an image of a double-headed eagle as the symbol of the Eastern Roman Empire. During the reign of the Romans, the tombs of the kings served as a place of refuge for the first Christians. The existence of a complex of tombs near Paphos has been known to historians for a long time, but the first official excavations began only in the 1970s. By this time, most of the tombs had already been looted. Currently, excavations of the complex are ongoing. Number 7. Sunken Ships Three kilometers north of Coral Bay, you can see ship Edro III, which sank right off the coast as a result of a series of failures. In December 2011, the vessel left Limassol in bad weather and headed for Rhodes with a load of drywall. At nightfall, strong winds and rough seas knocked the ship off its course. But this is not the worst part. While restoring its course, the vessel ran into underwater reefs 10 miles away from the coast. As a result of this collision, the engine failed and the cargo ship became uncontrollable. After that, the vessel dangled in the sea at the behest of wind and waves. Edro III drifted like this all night until at last in the morning she was thrown onto the rocks in this place. All crew members were taken ashore by helicopter and as it turned out the captain 
had a fake certificate of admission to operate the ship. Within two years, all fuel and other contaminants were removed from the vessel. Attempts were made to refloat the ship, but they all failed. Dismantling the vessel proved too expensive and difficult. Apparently, Edro III will forever lie here, attracting tourists to the nearby Oniro Cafe, which, by the way, serves delicious food. A similar incident occurred near Paphos with the Demetrius II ship, which was sailing with a cargo of timber from Greece to Syria. During heavy seas, the vessel ran aground one kilometer away from the coast, where she has been to this day since 1998. The crew was rescued by helicopters. The certificate of the captain and his assistant also turned out to be fake. The ship is aground opposite the King Everthen Beach Hotel. Number 8. Aphrodite's Birthplace According to the classical ancient Greek mythology, Aphrodite was born from the waves and foam of the sea beating against this shore. Therefore, in ancient times, the main center of worship of Aphrodite was in Paphos. Later, the Romans also called her Venus. According to another version, Aphrodite was born near Kithira Island, where the god Uranus was cut by his son Kronos. The body of Uranus fell in the sea, and the water began to foam. Suddenly, the most beautiful maiden came up from the foam and appeared on the surface. Aphrodite did not like Kithira Island, and the wind carried her in a shell to Cyprus, where she came ashore, near this stone. The present name of Aphrodite's rock is Petra to Romeo, which means Rock of the Romans. It refers to the legend of a hero of the Eastern Roman Empire of the 9th century AD, Diginus Acritus. According to legend, Diginus threw down a huge stone in the direction of the Saracens, invading the island. Therefore, another large rock located nearby is called the Saracen Rock. Number 9. CU Beach Bar it is located a bit to the south of Coral Bay. This is a great place to sit at a table right on the beach. The sound of the waves and the seascape creates a relaxing atmosphere. Order your favorite drink and enjoy the beautiful sunset view. It is not a real restaurant as they offer mostly fast food here. It is rather a bar with a varied cocktail list. Tables are best booked in advance. The name of the beach is Potoma Bay. You can swim here, but with caution, beware of the undercurrents and waves. Number 10. Ayos Neophytus Monastery. It is located 20 minutes drive to the north of Paphos and has an unusual history and architecture. The monastery was founded in 1159 by the monk Neophyte the Recluse. From the age of 18, Neophyte was a novice of another monastery in the north of the island, where he aspired to become a hermit, but did not receive a permission from the abbot for this due to his young age. A few years later, 
when Neophyte was returning from a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, he went to the deserted mountains near Paphos, where he settled in a small cave. For a long time, the monk manually carved a new space in the rock. As a result, he made a cell with a grave prepared for himself. And near the exit, he placed an altar from a marble slab for worship. The cave is called Englestria, which translates as a place of seclusion. After 10 years, other monks joined the hermit, and neophytes' dwelling gradually grows into a small monastery. New cells and premises are cut down in the rock. Among the sites, there also are frescoes painted on the walls of the cave during the life of neophyte. Nowadays, the monastery becomes especially crowded on September 28th, when the day of Saint Neophyte is celebrated.